Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very imaginary exponential equation. Maybe I should call it a non-standard equation. I called it exponential because of i to the power z and I call it imaginary because of i. i is an imaginary number or the imaginary unit as you know. It's basically the basis for complex numbers, sort of. It's actually the square root of negative 1. Even though negative 1 has two square roots, the other one is the opposite of i, obviously, because when you square both, you get negative 1. But uh, we call i as the square root of negative 1, probably because it's the principal square root, right? Uh, so we can sometimes specify a special one as the principal square root. And for real numbers, there's only one, and that is the principal square root. For example, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of negative 1 does not exist in the real world. It exists in the complex world. Okay? So, let's see how we can solve a problem like this. So, you're basically kind of looking at an exponent that gives you the exponent. So, remember some of the problems that we did? An exponent that doubles, a base that doubles, stuff like that. This time, we have an exponent that produces itself sort of, when i is the base, okay? Obviously, you can do different variations of this problem. You can have 2 to the z equals z, and you've probably seen those versions. They're very common on YouTube, and but I don't know if anybody did the complex version of those problems. If they did, please let us know in the comment section down below. All right, so let's see how we can solve a problem like this. And we're also going to be checking the results from Wolfram Alpha. Yes, Wolfram Alpha can most of the time solve these problems. Sometimes it has, uh, you know, some glitches. And you'll see it in my other video because today is Sunday, so you get two videos on A plus BI. By the way, I have another channel called CyberMath. Go ahead and check it out. Okay, it's spelled with an S, not with a C. And to clarify, I'm not from Siberia. Some people think I'm from Siberia because cyber math. Cyber is actually cyber with an S because someone else took cyber math with a C. Unfortunately, I'm going to cry. Hopefully, they will let me have it one day. So, anyways, how do we solve such a problem? Let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, and if you're new to complex numbers, before I forget to say it, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. Too much marketing. Let's get to work. So... To be able to solve a problem like this, we're going to use Euler's exponential form or the polar form. So whenever you have a complex number, you can definitely write it as e to the power i theta, right? Great. But you can usually do it like, for example, a number like 1 or i or uh, negative 1 or 2i, something like that, right? Or 1 plus i or root 3 minus i. Uh, as long as you can identify the theta, which is the argument, it's easy to do. Otherwise, you have to use our tangent, which could be problematic because depending on the quadrant, you have to adjust the angle. And we've done quite a few problems. Remember some formulas you, that used our tangent and on, for simplicity's sake, I just used the main one. So you can adjust it though, right? Anyways, so we can write i to the z using this notation, but there's also something called complex exponentiation, which says, which says something like, if you have something like w to the z, you can write it at e, e to the power z ln w. In this case, w happens to be i, so i to the power z can be written as e to the power z ln i. So, a couple of things we need to talk about. What is the log of a complex number? Then first of all, that's multi-valued, so you kind of need to specify, okay, I'm interested in this principal value, uh, or, in general, we can write the general solution. So, what is ln of a complex number? It's infinitely many complex numbers. So, to find the ln of a complex number, let's just call this w. We can basically write a formula, ln absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. And if w can be written as a plus bi, then argument, hopefully, can be written as arctangent b over a or some type of variation of this depending on the quadrant again i'm not going to worry about the details here Ho you can hopefully figure that out and obviously the absolute value of w is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared having said that we can easily find ln i because that will be the ln absolute value of i 
plus the argument, of course I need to multiply by i, right? i times the argument of i, but i on the uh, coordinate system or the argand plane is right here, which is one unit away from zero, so its absolute value is going to be one. And ln one is zero because this is a real valued ln, not in the complex world, it's in the real world. And argument of i is going to be pi over two, or you can add multiples of two pi n. Or, I mean, multiples of two pi is two pi n, where n is an integer. Make sense? So if you wanted to look at it in the general sense, you would include two pi n. Let's do it. This is zero. Don't worry about it. So you have i times that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to replace ln i with that. That's going to give me i to the power z. So far, so good. All right, let's do it. i to the power z is e to the power z ln i. And that is e to the power z times ln i is i times, oops, I don't think I need parentheses there, z times i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And what is that equal to? It's equal to z. So how do you write z? <laughs> Great. You can't write z like that. Let's leave it at this because we're going to do something. Okay? Cool. Now, to, if you wanted to simplify your work a little bit, you can go ahead and multiply. I mean, replace n with 0. Okay? We can do that at the end. So now, how do you solve an equation like this? This looks complicated, right? We're going to put these two things together. And I want to keep the z intact. So I'm going to bring this over here by multiplying by its reciprocal, which is going to bring a negative exponent. So it's going to look like this. z times e to the power negative zi multiplied by pi over 2 plus 2 pi n is equal to 1. Because I multiply by the reciprocal, it gave me 1, which is good. And now we got something like z times e to the power negative z something something. What does that mean? It means I, I'm going to use Lambert's w function. And if you apply Lambert's w on an expression like t e to the t, the result just becomes t. So it's the inverse function for t e to the t, which is inverse mapping. So if I can put this in a t e to the t form, then I can use Lambert's w function. But how do I adjust it so that it looks like t e to the t? Easy. I have a z, but I also need the negative 1 i times that. So I'm going to be multiplying both sides by negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, of course, that'll be multiplied by z. Then e to the power of that is just the same thing, as you can see here. So we got that, right? But this is equal to 1. So when I multiply both sides by this, I should have the same thing on the left-hand side, right? So let's go ahead and move this uh, to make a little bit room here. I could probably move this to the left a little bit. Oopsies, I messed up some of the exponents, but hopefully we can fix them real quick. So now we have uh, this, and I can probably erase this. Here we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to what I multiply both sides by, because I had a 1. That will be negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply Lambert on both sides, w, w. And w, application of w is going to give me this, because that's my t. Notice that. And w of t e to the t. Is going to give me t. So this is my t. Sorry about that. This is my t. And t e to the t. Oops, I forgot to include the z in there. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. All right. And then we'll include z in there. Here we go. Okay. So now that's my t. And this is e to the t, as you can see, right? Hopefully. And now I'm going to apply Lambert. So that's going to give me the t, which is negative z i, right? This should be an i, by the way, times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. That's going to give me that. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to be getting negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, right? Is that what we have so far? <laughs> okay, let's check it out. We multiply both sides by negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Negative i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. We already had the z. And when we applied it, we, we got this, right? Cool. What is that supposed to mean? What is, what is this going to give us, right? So if you wanted to simplify this a little bit, you could do the following. Replace n with 0. Let's just do that. Negative z i pi over 2 equals w of negative i pi over 2. And then you're going to have to 
isolate this. So multiply both sides by i and then multiply by 2 over pi. So it's going to be like 2 over pi negative Lambert negative i pi over 2. And that should give us the value of c. If I didn't make any mistakes, this should be the answer. Let's go ahead and check with Wolfram Alpha because I think I will give you the solution. Yes, something like this. But notice that uh, this is the equivalent to dividing by pi over 2. Same idea. There's an i here, but I don't have a minus sign. I don't know what happened. I guess um, it disappeared during the process. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and it's going to be soon. And bye-bye.